you standing in your ground is going to affect everybody around you. People are going to thank God that they were around you. And, um, you know, we could go back to Molly's testimony. We're five different people in this church we're praying for. And then she came in here preparing to die. Instead, she's still out there making jam. Amen. Amen. An eight-hour operation turned into, we can't find anything, come get your wife. See, this is the world that we live in. This is the world I've lived in for a lot of years, and I'm grateful. And um, I want you to know that Mary or Joseph, we don't know which one, See, there's certain things that you forget about with your kids, but then there's things that you'll remember. Okay, so your kids cry a hundred times, you forget it. Then they lay down in the grocery store and scream and cry, and you want to, and and see, (laughs) this is what we call the good old days. The good old days, you had a cheerleading group going, go for it, go for it, and now they're on the call, 911, okay, come on. So the thing is, you make a difference. It's you that makes a difference. And, um, and the reason is, it had to be Mary or Joseph that lost Jesus. Now, again, it was easy. They expect they're sleeping with their cousins. It was very normal. Okay, but a day later, they noticed their kid was gone. Now, today, we would call that bad parenting, right? But see, it wasn't bad parenting in that day because it was a whole group of people. They walked three days to get to Jerusalem. Then they walked three days back to get to, to Nazareth. Bill Prankard's goal is to do that walk on his 80th birthday. So uh, bless him. <laughs> I ain't doing it with him. But uh, so now, see, Mary remembered that, or Joseph remembered it. Because there's things that leave an emotional response in you. And if you've ever lost your kids for five minutes in a store, like Sears used to have these round things, and if your kids were a certain height, and it was like a little jungle. They could be, and you're running around and running around and running around and running around. I still remember, and she probably was gone for three minutes, right? But you're running around and running around. But I can still remember why, because it's emotional. Well, so Peter wasn't there, and Mark wasn't there, and Luke wasn't there, and Mary was there. And then Mary tells what Jesus said. And the reason she told it later and the reason they put it in was that Mary remembered that moment because they came at Jesus as if you did something wrong to me. And Jesus adjusted their thinking because they got thinking that Jesus was just their kid. And you got to quit thinking your kids are just your kids. You only get to encourage them and feed them. You're the mashed potato king and queen of the house. They're God kids. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you own your children. Every person owns their own life. And now you're to train them, you're to do certain things. But see, Mary, that was so emotional that she remembered that moment, but then she also remembered Jesus' words. And I was telling somebody the other day, if you took the name of Jesus out of the New Testament and went through and just said that John Smith said this, there's a lot of things in the New Testament that you would say John Smith is a pretty ignorant guy. But because we're religious, we can't say it about Jesus. But if I just walked up to you and you didn't know the Bible and I said, well, John Smith said this, I had to be about my father's business. Why were you even shocked? Or you're a dog. You say, that John Smith isn't a very nice guy. Just... Do that a little bit. But see, because we're now religiously framed, so I guarantee you, by the way, Jesus is right, even with Mary, okay? But Mary remembered that, and this is about how to affect your family, because that's what I want to talk about, how you can be a blessing for your family. You might not be the first one. You might be the third one. Thank God I've got quite a few cousins now. We're all, there's not many of us left, you know, that haven't got saved. And, uh, and I've got various cousins believing for the ones that aren't yet saved. Matter of fact, I have a cousin. I don't know to this moment whether he got saved or not. If he didn't get saved, it was because he was determined absolutely not to get saved. You know, because his best friend was Rob. And Rob really let him down when Rob went and got saved. Then does Rob. And Rob got gloriously saved. And Rob walked with the Lord. 
and, and my cousin. And so we just kept our faith on, but all his cousins, his sisters are all saved. Because I watched all my cousins. Because see, if you're a cousin of mine, you're getting saved. Now you can fight me. I still don't know to this day, but my assumption is his wife was a Christian. I think his kids were Christians. I don't know how many. But one day he finally, after so many times, he said, you're supposed to be dead. Isn't that right, Linda? You're supposed to be dead. I mean, it must have been 10, 15 years he was supposed to be dead. Your heart goes, and then one day he goes out to get the mail and he's dead. Okay, now I still believe he's in heaven. Why? Because I'm a believer. And I just figure if you're relating to me and you're a cousin, you're getting in. Now you have more power than I do when it comes to getting in. Do you understand? But... I'm going to keep my pressure on you, and that's what I'm telling you to do. That's why you're here tonight, so that you could learn some things, especially when you want to get discouraged. And that's why you don't have to keep praying for your loved ones. Once you've prayed, you start believing for your loved ones. Sometimes God will give you a little picture from me and my brother. I've told him many times I saw my brother dancing. And so for all those times, I wondered, well, my brother hasn't come to the Lord. He resisted the Lord. Amazing guy resisted the Lord. Um, but whenever I start to get discouraged, will he come to the Lord? I just stop and see my brother dancing. And I'd say to myself, I didn't give me that picture because it was a picture that I never, if I was picturing my brother, I might've pictured him a certain way. I never would have pictured him dancing. But so I would just stop and picture that picture. Yes, thank you, Lord. And not only did he get saved, you know that story, I was in the church when he walked the aisle and he believed in healing and he believed in ministry and the Lord told me he would be a part of my ministry and he is part of my ministry. I thought he would work with me, but instead when he passed away, he left uh, 80 or $100,000 American, I think it was 80,000 American to this church. And so one of the major centers that we lived, we built in South America, one, the land was bought through his gift and some of the other building was built. So when the Lord told me he'd be part of our ministry, he's part of our ministry. Okay, now that's not how I would have interpreted it, but the truth is, it's still true. And his works, and I always say my brother has the noisiest tombstone because it's filled with soccer players. Every day in, in Brazil on two campuses, they yell and scream and holler and laugh in my brother's tombstone. I don't know where his other tomb, well, I do know because I spread his ashes out by Vancouver Island somewhere. Um, I mean, wherever they drove the boat, I threw the ashes over. By the way, this didn't happen to me, but if you ever are spreading ashes in water, let me tell you, the secret is you gotta go real low right next to the water. A lot of people go spreading ashes and all of a sudden, <laughs> just a little side trip right there. Okay, might have saved you a lot of embarrassment in the future. Now we're going to go now to Matthew. We're kind of connecting it to read the red, but it's a little bit extra. And it's, um, it's, uh, it's Matthew chapter 15 I want to go to. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, and we're mainly trying to see what Jesus is saying, but in this one, I'm going to talk a little bit about the lady, because we already referred to her earlier, because I don't know why sometimes it takes me a long time for the Lord to teach me certain things. I think it's because it's not important, but a few years ago, I shared a little bit about offense. I never realized how many Christians stop their growth by getting offended. I'm shocked because I would have thought Christians, I can see a brand new Christian, he doesn't understand things. But Christians that are older Christians, I'm a little shocked that they get offended because life happens. Someone said, you know, well, they went to a church and someone hurt their feelings. Yeah, you, if you're in a family and you got more than three people, keep turning up for Christmas, someone's going to offend you. If you got 23 people in your family, now you come to a church and you got 123 people, Someone's going to do some, And if that person is going to keep you, don't blame them. It's you. And you can take offense because it says you take offense. And this woman got healing to her kid because she refused to take offense. This is the beauty of this woman. 
And so, now, you might think, was Jesus being rude? No, he's only being rude because you're a Westerner. He had a job to do. See, people think Jesus could do everything, and I shared a few weeks ago how that he couldn't. Because if, if they could do everything, he would not have had to go to Egypt, but he had to go to Egypt. Amen? Or was this just a plan or just a, a trick of God? He wanted to write a good story. So we're going to, I've been, I, I know about that, how, that road to Egypt. I've not been on the whole thing, but it's a rough road. And they went to Egypt because they had to get out because there was a king about to kill them. And I don't care who you are, you better follow the Lord. Say, follow the Lord. Because the Lord is going to protect your life. But if you say, I don't have to follow the Lord. I have authority. I'm, well, you have authority where you have authority. You start getting your arrogance going. By, you can take a hit to the gut. And so Mary and Joseph had to leave town. And um, because they had to leave town, they had to follow instructions. Here's Jesus had to follow instructions. There's certain things I, God has told me that I'm to do. I don't have to tell everybody what he's told me to do, but I have to follow instructions. And there's certain things he'll tell people, you have to focus more on this and more on that. He'll tell another person, you have to focus more on this and more on that. The Lord knows what he's doing. And some of it's connected to your life. Some of it's connected to things you go through. So when you have victories, you have, it's an easier way for you to, to do that. And that uncle that came to the Lord, he said to my niece, to, to his daughter, my cousin, he said, you know, now I wouldn't have, if, he, if someone was describing me, I wouldn't describe me this way. But after we were visiting them one time, before he had committed his life fully to the Lord, he turned to my, my cousin and said, you know, Brian's the same. He's always the same. Well, I've never, I, that was an interesting thing for him to see. In other words, he saw me being consistent for a long time. You keep going. But see, Jesus had no authority. If you read Jesus, he couldn't go to where the Romans were. He loved the Romans. But he, wasn't, he was called as a Messiah. He was called to fulfill Old Testament scriptures, and, and the Romans didn't have any Old Testament scriptures. And the Greeks didn't have any Old Testament scriptures. He was called to fulfill the scriptures. And he was called to the lost sheep of Israel. They were God's sheep lost because they had bad shepherds. And so Jesus came as a good shepherd to people. And the, the Bible says here that, that healing is the children's bread. If you want to just meditate on that. See, that's what I've talked about this morning. People don't want to even spend time meditating on scriptures. If you're sick, you might as well meditate on that I mean, I can tell you, I, I mean, sometimes I'm bored. And so, I mean, we've seen some of the Judge Judy shows three times over. Because I go to, to another channel and it's junk. So I'll go back to Judge Judy and Judge Judy will still tell everybody to be quiet, shut up. This is my show. You're right. You're paying this money. And I think the world is well. Come on. And I can do whatever I'm doing on the internet and Jane can do whatever she's doing over there. And Judge Judy can just talk away in the background. So you are in this amazing place. See, Jesus also had to obey rules. Jesus had to follow the word. Mother, I wasn't about me not being with you. It was about me being about my father's business. This is higher priority. And so here, this beautiful woman, I'm going to tell you, she's one beautiful woman. She's not just a good mother. She is one beautiful woman because she didn't take offense. Why don't you just decide you're going to be one of these people that aren't going to take offense? Why don't you just decide you're going to be one of those people just not going to take offense? Now, the problem is, if you say that, the enemy might find send a few jerks to test you. Hello? <laughs> and he might, right? But once you pass the jerk test, you won't take offense. What's the point of taking offense? So he said, I am not sent. So she comes, I want my kid healed. She'd heard about Jesus. Uh, verse 24, but unto, um, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of Israel and of the house of Israel. Verse 26, um, it is not proper. 
it's not appropriate to take the children's bread, which was healing. See, he was having services giving bread because he said the children's bread, and who are the children? The Israelis are the children. Now, right now, don't get mad at the Israelis if you listen to the news media. I mean, I think it's like they're 2% of the population, and I think it's 75% or something of all hate crimes are still against the Jews. Right now, top um, uh, Hebrew um, rabbis in Germany are saying, get out of Germany to the Jews. See, because there's a spirit in the world that's against God, and they can't get a hold of God, so they get a hold of the Jews, or they'll get a hold of you. See, because you're now the Jew. So the devil can't get at God, so he's got to get at what God's possession is. The only way he can bother God is to fight God's precious lambs, God's precious jewels, and that's you. But he showed us how to fight back. And this woman shows us how not to quit. Say, I'm not going to quit. Anybody that knows me, come on, say it with me. Anybody that knows me is going to be blessed because I'm in their life. One time Roger wrote me one of the most beautiful letters because I, you know, I, I, I've been in, in connected to his life for a long time, you know. And um, I won't go into the funny story of, how he first saw me, but, but he talked about how that I'd been involved in his life and how I was even there to catch his father when his father died right here in the church in a service. See, you can't do that if you're not in church. If he hadn't come to church, if the others hadn't come to church. See, there's things, and and. Vimy, I see Vimy, you don't know it. I see Vimy dancing there. You don't know how many evening services I'm in. And 88-year-old Vimy is up there. I can just look over and I can see him right now if I want. I just see him dancing, dancing, dancing. Baptist in the morning, Pentecostal at night. That's Vimy. Amen? See? And then he went the way we all wanted to go. I mean, he got raptured before the rapture. Do you understand? He's got, he had the closest experience. If I was to describe the rapture, I've told preachers this. This is the closest thing that I've ever seen to the rapture, and I didn't even know he was about to die. But when I walked close to him, the power of God was on him. It was just literally like a laser beam, if I was to call it, and the presence of God. And so I didn't think he was going to die. It came to my brain, he's either going to start prophesying and again, I've said this before, but if he prophesies, I wasn't worried because if you're 88 and you say stuff and there's a 200 people here and they don't understand you, they just say he's 88. <laughs> Hello? But then I also thought he might get to fall over in the spirit. And I thought, Lord, how do I do it if he falls over the spirit? I'm talking to the Lord while I'm seeing this, this guy and I'm sensing the power of God. There's a lot of things you can think in just a few seconds. But then when he fell, there was no doubt in my mind Vimy had left the building. There was no doubt. His body didn't feel the same. The atmosphere didn't feel the same. But see, you don't get that if you don't stay faithful. You don't get that benefit. You don't get that benefit. And so this woman, you know, he says, now it's, it's not your bread. Because I'm here for them. That's what God asked me to do. I'm there for them. Now, I'm going to tell you, I said this before, but Holy Spirit changed Jesus' thinking. Jesus was not being rude. He was not testing her. He was sticking to his commission. When he told his mother, Mother, it's not time to start my ministry, his mother activated his ministry before Jesus thought it was his ministry. Because she ignored what Jesus said and said, get some wine. And the Bible says that was the very first miracle created not by Jesus. Do you get what I'm saying? That miracle was created by Mary. Mary's faith got the Holy Ghost to tell Jesus, do it this way. This woman said, I'm not leaving here without my miracle. But this is the children's bread. Come on, can I have a crumb or two? And then immediately, see, because see, Jesus was operating under the word led by the spirit. The, see, you're operating under the word. If you want to hear the spirit more, study the word. 
The more you study the word, the more spirit can teach you and talk to you because he uses the word to talk to you, just like in that prayer meeting yesterday. As I left, 23rd Psalm was on me. So the Holy Spirit, I didn't know the Holy Spirit was going to connect, and I just started laughing. Well, the, my whole message was taking authority into 23, and then let's go to God's man of authority in Psalm 23. I kind of thought it was cute. Amen. I took it as a little confirmation. And so what happens is, it goes on, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as you will. So who controlled this? The woman did because Jesus said she did. She, he said, you can have what you want. You can have what you want. That meant it was her faith that moved the Holy Spirit to tell Jesus, agree with her. Why do I say agree with her? Because she already came to get her miracle. She walked a long way to get her miracle. I can say quickly, but you may not believe me. Quickly, let's go to Joshua chapter 2. I want to read four verses because I'm talking about how you get your family. Don't you dare stop believing for your family. Don't you start, stop believing for your neighbors. Don't you dare stop. That's why you're here. And they're not all, if you know them, it's going to take them a while. They need to know you're consistent. You need to be there when they have a crisis. You need to turn up to the hospital when they have a crisis. How did I ever know I mean, I never imagined. I knew Gordon and Linda because Linda, I think it was through Linda and Kathy, they worked at the, uh, the um, um, police station together and, and they had a loss in their family. And how would I ever know that this amazing ministry and family that's been a blessing to me and this church for so long would just be because I went and visited them and they never said anything to me for years later. But see, the Lord took that. Yeah, I was there when Linda got saved in the, in the pizza shop. That's where Linda, yeah, Linda got saved in the, the first pizza shop Pentecostal church. <laughs> Amen. Eat and get born again at the same time. Amen. And, and Gord, he, got, he, he prayed the first time there, and then later on, Linda dragged me over to make sure it really took. Come on. <laughs> and it did take. And we could go on with, you need to talk to them about the miracle and all the things that worked against them to tell them not to keep going to this church. And I'm going to tell you, you ask them how much dividend it's paid, that they worked against everybody that came against them. I don't think I know of anybody that's had so many things come against them. But see, the Lord turned it all around. So here's, here's this, um, this woman. These two guys were spying on behalf of Joshua. Joshua chapter 2, verse 4. I'm going to read all four verses, so then I can just tie it up. And the woman took the two men. Remember, she was a prostitute. And again, it wasn't the same. Maybe it's today. It was a viable business. But the thing is, that also meant that people could go in and out of a prostitute's house and nobody expected you to know everybody. You know, it's a great little saying. When we were in Israel, they take you to all these old places. And right in the cement, there's a beautiful little saying in the section of the city, uh, out in Capernaum or whatever, and it says, come for a short period of time, enjoy yourself, and leave. <laughs> that's the prostitute section, okay? And, uh, and so that's why, think of it, God uses a house because people could go in and out and they were just two men in and out and that wasn't unusual, okay? And the woman took the two men and hid them and said, uh, there came men unto me, but I, I don't know where they were. So when they came and said, where are those guys? They were still in her house, but she said, I don't know where they went. And then she hid them, verse nine. And then she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land. She's a dog, mean, mean an unbeliever. She's an outcast, being a prostitute. She's not under the blessing of Abraham until she quoted the word and said, let me tell you what I know. I know you're going to win. 
And when we get to the end, you're going to find out not only did she know they were going to win, she said, everybody in my family is getting saved because of this. Everybody, she said, I know you're going to win and I'm going to be on the winning side. She risked her life, yes. And then she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that your terror has fallen on us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. They didn't know that. They were spies. Now, therefore, verse 12, now, therefore, I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you will show kindness unto my father's house. She didn't say unto my house, she said unto my father's house, meaning my father has kids, my brothers and sisters. And um, unto my father's house. Now they told her certain things she'd have to do if, if they weren't in the house and you know, use the same rope that you let us down, put that rope, uh, it was probably, it was a red rope, so it was probably something in the prostitute's house, but it was a rope and they used that rope and then they said, put that red rope. Um, then we'll know it's your house. And of course, we know that God did a miracle. And verse 21 says, and she said, according to your words, so be it. And she sent them away and they departed and she bound the scarlet line in the window. And what it says is that everybody, all her brothers and sisters and everybody came because of one woman. You're that woman. If you are a woman, you're that man. That's why you're here tonight. You're here tonight. Well, it doesn't look like they're going to come. It doesn't look like any of them are going to come. I can say it now. I couldn't say it earlier. But when my uncle, who is that military guy, said to me one day, he said, Brian, it's hard to believe in God when you've had to go into a tank. He was a tank guy and take pieces of your best friend pieces of your best friend out of the tank. You know what I thought that day? That's a really good point. It really makes sense why a lot of people, when they lose their children, well, how come God didn't, and why, and why? And that's a good point. How could God allow this? Well, the thing is, he didn't know enough word to understand God's not allowing it, and that wasn't the time to teach him a Bible lesson. Was what he was doing is he was opening his heart. That's what's just happened in your family again. He was opening his heart, not ready to accept Jesus, but he was giving me a gift of insight into his hurt. See, my brother gave me the insight into his hurt, why he had rejected Christ. A man up on the 16th line, couldn't, we couldn't get him saved. But then one day out of his mouth, just the quietest little voice, he said this, and then our team come back up now if you can. Out of the quietest little voice, because we were talking about God being a good to God, out of the quietest little voice, and I'm not blaming anybody. People that don't know, don't know. But he said, how could I love a God that took my mother? But he said in such a little voice, because that was the little boy speaking out of him. And yet he was... 20 years older than me, but he said, how could I trust a God who took my mother when I was only eight? And I got to take him to John 10, 10. There's a thief in town. He's not going to quit stealing. He's not going to quit destroying. He's not going to quit doing what thieves do. He's unrepentant, but there's a God in town. And the difference between there's a thief in town and a God in town is which half of the verse are you going to believe? Are you going to focus on the thief? Oh, the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil. Well, why don't you get to the second half of the verse? But I, come on, say it with me. But I have come, come on. But I have come that you might have abundant life. And you don't know how sweet when he got, when he saw that in the word. He wanted to accept the Lord, but he felt like he was being disloyal to his mom. He felt like he was being disloyal to his eight-year-old self. God, you took my mother. Someone said, you want another angel up there. I wanted my mother here. But suddenly, I believe his mother was praying. I believe he came into the kingdom. Amen. Father, we just thank you.